Hello and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is my husband Joe. Hello. Hello. So we are we are here today to talk about uh, how to how to outline your book lightning fast. Outline your book. Mm-hmm. What's an outline? Well, we'll come to that in a moment. The problem that I want to solve in this podcast is the whole getting stuck before you've even started thing. Right. Right. When you're writing your book. And so you try and dive in and you're like, right, I'm going to write a book. I've got this idea. And you dive in and you try and write. And then you just sit there staring at the blank page. And then you reach for Facebook or Instagram. And then you cry. Mm-hmm. And no wonder, because it's a really tall order to write a book at all, let alone open a blank page and just start. So if you don't know what you're going to write exactly, you're going to struggle to write anything at all. Okay. And the solution as you may have guessed, <laughs> is to write a detailed outline. And I'm going to very quickly show you how to do that in this episode. And Joe's going to fire questions at me and say, what do you mean by that? And okay. Blah, blah, blah. I can do that. So I'm just going to switch windows on my Mac because I wrote this podcast outline and then I wrote a better article. So I'm just going to refer to the article. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, writing outlines. People roll their eyes a little bit when I say write an outline because it reminds them of writing essays at school. Do you ever been told to yeah, yeah. write outlines? How did that make you feel? It kind of felt like it was getting in the way of actually writing the essay. Mm. Felt like it almost felt like procrastination sometimes. Yeah, which is a funny thing because your most powerful weapon in the fight against procrastination and fear and anxiety and all of that kind of thing is actually your outline. Mm -hmm. And if my teachers had told me that and also had told me that it was a way for me to be lazier than I already was, I would have like done the Snoopy happy dance. And I would have dived into outlining all the time. It wasn't until I started writing books and kind of created my own method of outlining that I realised what a superpower this is. Mm-hmm. Um, because like you say, it kind of feels like procrastination. It's like, oh, I need to write this thing, but I... I'm I just going to do something else instead. Do something else. But you can't, you know what, you can't, you can't just dive in and write. Yeah? But you, can, you can just dive in and write rubbish. You can. Disorganised rubbish. But what happens is, because I remember teachers, you know, teachers would say, what happens is you've got to outline because otherwise your writing's going to kind of ramble drunkenly across the page and it's going to stop off for a bit of a fight and then it's going to get sidetracked by a comfortable looking sofa and then before you know it, you've just got this big word salad. Is that what your teacher said? It sounds like thing, something you would say. I have paraphrased <laughs> and embellished. Extensively. <laughs> Made it more interesting. Because my teacher's just like, write, write an outline, because otherwise it won't make sense, which is quite dull. I like to be more colourful than that. Okay. Um, so, but you know what? My teachers were right, and so were your teachers. <laughs> they, they were right. You will, you will write a better article, a better book, a better essay, a better whatever the hell it is that you're writing, if you write an outline. But what they didn't tell us was how much easier sketching an outline would make writing the damn thing. Or they didn't tell me anyway. Mm. Did they ever say to you, oh, it's going to make things so this much easier? This will make things easier. No, not really. No, I don't remember ever being told that by a teacher. And it's hilarious because if they told me that writing an outline could kind of cut my writing time by like a third or more, I would have been all over that, like a tramp on chips, mm. all over it. Um, and if they had told me that it would be my best weapon against procrastination and confidence woes and anxiety, again, I would have been all over it because if you've ever sat down to write anything big, I bet your inner dickhead has piped up and been like, huh, you're not going to be able to do this and that's not very good. And blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if they had given me a technique like the one I'm about to give you, I would have been really happy. Okay. Cool. Technique. Technique. So, we are going to, this is what I would like you to do, dear listener. I would like you to do a quick re- recap of the whole reason behind you writing a book. So, open a new document in Scrivener or Word or Google Docs or whatever the hell you do your writing in. And I would like you to create the following four headings. My big idea my book compass, my readers, and my goals. That's four. And under those headings, I want you to note down the following. So under my big idea, I want you to, in one paragraph, describe your big idea, who you're writing it for, and what you want your reader to be, do, have, and feel when they're finished. What will they get out of it? That's a big paragraph. It does sound like a big paragraph, but actually it's not. So for example, my book, which is now available on my website and on Amazon. Nice. (laughs) is um, called How the Hell Do You Write a Book? And it is all about (laughs) how to write a book for business owners who are stuck, who know they've got a story inside them. And by the time they've finished reading this book, they are going to feel confident enough to write it and they're going to have everything they need to have actually started doing it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they'll have bloody made a start. You know what I mean? So that's only a paragraph. It's it's quite short. So you you should be able to do that. Um, Heading number two. My Book Compass. 
What's a book compass? Well, this is going to keep you on track. So you're going to write this out and stick it on a piece of paper Mm -hmm. where you can see it when you're writing so that when you start getting off track or panicking or whatever, you're going to look at it and be like, oh, okay. And you're going to fill in the blanks. I will use my book to reach my ideal reader audience by showing them what you're going to show them with the book, which will enable me to reach my goals. So for example, for me, I would say I am, I will use my book to reach business owners who want to write a book by showing them exactly how to get started and actually finish their book, publish it and sell it, which will enable me to find the kind of clients that I want to work with and stop wasting time, my time and clients time with people who aren't necessarily interested. Okay. So I could have said that better, but you get the idea. That's the first one. Yeah. First draft. Um, And then you are going to write a little bit about your readers your ideal readers. So you're going to describe briefly, very briefly, your ideal reader and remind yourself of your ideal reader avatar. So what's the big problem your book will solve for them? What pain does it cause them? Okay. And what's the fourth one? The fourth one is, um, why are you writing this book? Okay, so yeah, my goal. Yeah, your goals as a writer. Why are you writing this book? What do you want it to do for you? So you've already talked about what you want it to do for your reader. What do you want want what do you want it to do for you? Does it need to help you find better clients? Does it need to cut down the number of tire kickers? Does it enable you to raise your fees? What do you want it to do for you? Um, It's really crucial to remind yourself of this stuff before you sit down to write your outline because it's going to inform what your outline is. Okay. So I'm hoping that you've already done this stuff if you're thinking of writing a book and you're ready to do your outline, but if not... Do that stuff. Do that stuff. Um, And yeah. So now it's time to start on the outline itself. Just a quick question from the point oh. of view of the uh, the dear listener. Hi, Vagard. Go. Um, Hi, Vagard. <laughs> can uh, it, it, have you got this available somewhere so I can read it? I have indeed. Excellent. This is available to download from my website. Excellent. And we will give you the URL in the show notes. Splendid. Because there's there's like actual like there's like detail here, isn't there? It needs yeah. needs you know. You, yeah. you probably want it written down. No, there is something that you can download and I'm actually working on refining it at the moment. So I will up, update the link at some point with a better version of what I've already got. Okay, but what you've already got is up. Yeah. Cool. What I've already got is up. So it's time to start your outline now. We're going to do high level sketching. This is going to be fun. And by the time you've finished it, you're going to have a valuable document that you will refer to throughout your book writing adventure. Okay. You are going to create another two headings on a new sheet of paper new sheet of paper there's a big vertical line down the middle yeah you could do one heading on one side one heading on the other yeah or you could divide it top and bottom i don't care okay um but you're going to create the two headings they're going to be number one big idea topics and number two the lint trap the lint trap yeah so you know when you have um a tumble we don't have a tumble dryer but tumble dryers have a lint trap and it's where they catch all the fluff right and every now and then you have to empty the lint trap so it doesn't clog up the otherwise it catches dryer. fire and burns your house down yes it does you don't want to. You don't want to set your book on fire, do you? Well, you might do it at some point, but let's not do it now. Empty your lint trap, people. Empty your lint trap. So the lint trap is there to catch all of your ideas and thoughts that don't directly relate to your book's big idea, because they might be useful. They probably will be useful. They they might form a whole of the book. They might form blog articles. Might be all kinds of good stuff, just not for this book. Exactly. And the reason that I want you to create the lint trap section is because we find it. If if you have an idea, it's really difficult to throw it away. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to try and make you do that because the danger is if I make you throw it away completely, you're going to stick it in your big idea topics and you're going to have a big bloated mess of a book. So I want you to, if it doesn't fit directly under your big idea, wang it in the link trap. And at this point, you're just kind of scribbling ideas down. It's like, okay, so for example, if I am if I own a shop and I'm writing a book about fashion and helping people choose clothes better and all the rest of it, it might be like, right, I'm just going to like scribble down all of the ideas that I can think of. So it's going like, like colours and styles and Yeah, and you're just like, wang it all shoes. down on the left-hand side. And then you might also think of um, like savings accounts and, you know, things like that, which kind of might pop up if you're thinking how much do I spend on clothes so it's like mm-hmm. well savings accounts aren't relevant so I'm just going to put that in the lint trap because that'll be a good article to write at some point that's like vaguely relevant does that make sense yes that probably wasn't the best <laughs> like rugs maybe rugs interior design kind of goes design. with fashion but not really yeah yeah okay so don't worry about the order for now just get them down on paper so the next thing that I would like you to do is I would like you to I need to scroll down a bit. 
<laughs> I would like you to scroll down a bit. Yeah, I would like you to scroll down a bit. Okay, well, let's give them an example. Let's give them an example from a made-up book and a real book. Okay. So if you were writing a book on fashion that was going to help people invest in clothes that really suit them and make them look and feel fabulous, okay. what would your main topics be, maybe, in no particular order? Um, I, 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 I would assume... I got, um, yeah, body, body shape, <laughs> colour, um, textures, patterns... Um, dresses. Dresses. Suits. Yeah, business wear. Jeans. Casuals. Holidays. Sports. Accessories. Shoes. Hair. Makeup. Yeah. And you know what? At some point, you might decide that hair and makeup go in the lint chop. But for now, they can stay in with the, with the main topic because they are relevant to how you look, you know, as a whole. I have my bobble hat, which is an accessory. And also, I have bad hair, which is hidden under the bobble hat. They're relevant. Okay. It's like, what do you do when you're having a bad hair day? You put a hat on. Anyway. I digress. Um, here's an example from a real book um, called How to Sell a Crap Load of Books by a guy called Tim van der Hey and also Hi, someone called Naren Ariel. Hi, Naren. Um, which is divided into 10 secrets or chapters. They call them secrets. And their 10 chapters, their secrets are platform, rule of 10, rule of one half million, build on what you have, branding, local celebrity strategy, pull don't push, synergy rule, create sharp, sexy intellectual property and find the X factor. I don't know what some of that means, but okay. Doesn't matter. They did. That's the point. So they've come up with those ideas. Um, they came up with a big idea, which was how to sell a crap load of books. It mm-hmm. doesn't really need refining any more than that. So it's pretty specific. Pretty specific. And then they're like, right, what do we need to tell people? And these are all the topics. So like pull, don't push, for example, is about marketing. You want to pull people towards you rather than pushy sales at them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now you've got your chapter headings. They will, they will change. Don't worry about like creating clever chapter headings. This is just the chapters at the moment. These are concepts for each chapter. Yep. Um, you can change the order later. Don't mess around with the order. Just get them on a sheet of paper and start working with them. Mm-hmm. So stage two of your outline is finding the details. Okay. You are going to take the first of these points, the first chapter. So for example, body shape. Body shape. And you are going to break it down even more. Okay. Just like this. You are going to break it down into the chapter hook. The chapter hook. So what's the big idea for this chapter? Why should I read it? What problem or pain is it solving? What is exciting? What ex- what exciting thing is it teaching me? Yeah. So you might want to include a story or an anecdote to set the chapter up if that's if that's how you want to start. So you might be taught you might be thinking you know, oh, you know what? I saw this amazing dress on a friend of mine and I thought, oh, you know what? I would really like to have that dress. And so you went and bought the dress as well. And it did not look the same. It didn't look the same at all. It mm-hmm. looked wrong. It didn't suit you. It's like, how could it look so different on her than it is on me? And you realised it was because you had different body shapes. Mm-hmm. And so that would be, you know, that's a bit of a basic story, but that's the kind of story that you could tell. And that's the hook for this. That's the big idea for this chapter is yeah. why do some clothes look really good on some people and not others? And it's body shape. It's a body shape thing. So you will then, once you've done that, very briefly, you're going to then look at the chapter takeaway. What is the crucial takeaway for this chapter? People need to realise what body shape they are. Yeah, and it's important. And understand what that means to them. Yeah, not in a shaming way, not in a I wish I was like an hourglass shape when I'm actually like a round shape. Not at all. It's it's Mm -hmm. more about finding out what body shape you are so that you can pick the clothes that are going to make the best of you. Yes. Um, and so you want to note down in this little heading here, what do you want your reader to be, do, have and feel when they're finished? What action do you want them to take at the end of this chapter? Mm-hmm. Simple. And after that, you are going to list a load of chapter subtopics. So what are the main points that fall within this chapter? What supporting points can you... So you might be going like, you might you might have your various body types yeah. at this point, might you? you Hourglass, might have... pear-shaped, apple-shaped, I think they call it. And that's where I run out of body shapes. shapes. Like skinny, large... You know, tall. Tall, short, petite, long legged, short legged, long bodied, short. There are. Yeah. Really curvy, really athletic. Big shoulders, which is a problem that I have because I'm strong and I can't find fucking shirts to fit me. Mm. I like hulk out of them. It's really annoying. And that makes me feel really unfeminine and I hate that. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, this, this stuff is important. You might be thinking, oh, it's a bit frivolous writing a book about fashion. It's like, it's not. It's, this, everything is important. Side note. Back on topic. So yeah, what supporting points do you want to include? Once you've written your supporting points out, again, you know, wearing them all out, if you, if you come up with stuff that doesn't quite fit, put them in the lint trap. Yeah. Supporting stories. 
What stories do you have to back up the content that you're writing about from your own life, from your clients' lives, from stories you've simply found elsewhere? Make sure you reference them if, you, if you're going to do that. But yeah, yeah, what stories do you have? Okay. Note them down, link them to your supporting points. Because one of the things that I often do, and I tell other people not to do it, but I do it. It's like, do as I say, not as I do. I'll find a story, I'll be like, ah, oh, that's brilliant. And I'll stick it into my Scrivener file and I'll find it later. And I'll be like, I have literally no idea what I was going to do with that story. So yeah, make a note of why you've saved this story and how you think you can link it into your book. <laughs> um, what's the next thing I want people to do? Um, signpost the next chapter. Yeah, so this is really important. Not everybody does this, but I think it's really important um, to make the book flow. So how does this chapter link into the next one? Tie the book together so that your reader slides smoothly from one chapter to the next. It kind of implies we know what the next chapter is, though. And at this point, maybe we don't. That's a really good point, Joe. So if you do know what the next chapter is going to be, this is going to be really easy for you. If you don't know yet, come back to this. You can come back to your outline. Your outline can be a living, breathing thing that you can change. Okay. Um, should we give them some examples? Okay. Oh, we don't have to. Well, How long have we got left? I have no idea. Um, 21, oh, we're 20 minutes in. Oh, we've, got, we've got a few minutes left. Okay. Okay, so let's use the How to Sell a Crap Load of Books as an example. The first... The first chapter is entitled Platform Before Book, Way Before. Platform, so what's the chapter hook, Joe? Platform Before Book. Okay. Um, so the chapter hook, uh, this, this chapter will start with a story about Tim Van Der Hay's clients, uh, one of whom was action film star Tyrese Gibson. Who on earth is he? I don't know. Action film star? Well, his book, How to Get Out of, the own, How to Get Out of Your Own Way, went straight into the New York Times bestseller list. Oh, Okay. And when it fell off that list, he tweeted his 3 million Twitter followers to buy it, so it popped back on again. Yeah. Thus illustrating the importance of building a platform before you start to sell your book. Not all of us are going to have 3 million Twitter followers, but... It'd be nice. It would be nice. But have you got? if you haven't got a platform at all, it's time to start building one. You know, do you have a thousand followers on Instagram? Do you have a mailing list? Do you have a mailing list? Do you have, you know, 2,000 people who like your Facebook page or even 500 people? It doesn't matter. The people, you need to build on this platform. So that's that's the chapter hook for this. Okay. Um, what's the chapter takeaway for it? Start building your bloody platform long before you publish your book. Yeah. Take you, need, you need to have these people on your team. Yeah. And this is all stuff you can be doing, by the way, while you're writing your book. Yes. And you should be doing it. And, and for general sensible business reasons, you should be building a platform anyway. Absolutely. Um, so they're chapter subtopics that I went that I found by flipping through the chapter and finding their subheadings um, is planting isn't harvesting you know once you set up your platform you've got to actually build it it's not enough to just you know plant your tomatoes I think is the analogy they use you can't just plant your tomatoes you need to nurture them and then pull them off the thing and pinch the bits off pinch pinch the bits yeah pinch, pinch the <laughs> Um, another subtopic another subtopic is the four C's which is consistency constancy coordination and connection. So this um, is about don't be don't be sporadic don't be don't we put, don't need to explain all these this okay yeah don't examples. don't put loads of ridiculous yeah. effort. Um, another subtopic getting traction another subtopic volume 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 basically publish a shitload of stuff another traction uh, sorry another subtopic you got game it takes time to do this stuff another subtopic when to start you know when do you start publishing on the internet social media blah 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 and final subtopic how long things should take. Okay. So that's all of their subtopics that they stuck in their first chapter, which was um, platform before book. Okay. The supporting stories, they used um, parallels with planting a garden, like tomatoes. I said, the tomatoes thing. Um, a guy called Dan Zarella from HubSpot um, about press releases. He was talking about press releases and they talked about Michael Hyatt, um, who was talking about expertise. So okay. those are the stories they used. Um, they actually didn't signpost the next chapter but they could have done by linking the importance of a platform to the fact that selling books is always 10 times harder than you will think it, than you think it will be, um, which is chapter two, which is the rule of 10, which is what that means. And off they go again with topics and hooks and subtopics. Exactly. And that, my fine feathered friend, is how you outline your book. Okay. Does that... that it's pretty much. I mean, it's it's. You, there's there's you a lot. Know, of, there's a lot of information there. There is, but it doesn't take that long to do. <laughs> you know, you can outline your entire book in less than a day, easily. Easily, I would say in half a day, depending on how much of an idea you've got about what you want to talk and, about. And if, uh, presumably, if you have, you know, a moment where you think, "Oh, I've just had a brilliant subtopic idea," you can look through your outline and say, "Well, it should really sit in this chapter." You can add it yeah. in. You start editing that chapter, and off you go. Exactly. It's all good. Exactly. So, yeah, once you've done that for your first chapter, you just repeat it for all of the others and your book is all but written. Do you find that following that 
technique leads to chapters that all kind of it, it feels formulaic. I mean, I guess you've got to be careful that you're not sort of boilerplating these chapters together in such a way that they all feel like the same sort of structure. You, you might have to mix it up a little bit. It's a really good question, but no, it's not something that has ever worried me or does worry me because the chapter hook for every chapter is going to be different. It might be that you've got a story to tell for the first chapter and that's how you start the hook. It might be that the second chapter starts with not a story actually, but like um, a parable or a real life example or, you know, something, a fact, mm. an interesting fact. Okay. So you don't start every chapter the same way. So you, you, I guess, I guess, yeah, you, you've got to be careful that the all of your chapter hooks aren't all anecdotes. Yeah. Or aren't all, you know, disasters from other people's businesses or something. You need to be a bit, a, a bit, bit conscious about what you're doing. Yeah. And if you think about all of your subtopics, you have to have subtopics. You have to order what you're going to talk about and how you're going to talk about it because otherwise it's just going to be a big word salad. Sure. Um, and so it doesn't. It, you're not, this isn't, it's, it is a good question and I understand your concern, but it's not something that's going to be a worry because apart from anything else, each chapter is going to be different. And also human beings, we like formula. We, we like, like to we know like what, to, we like to know what to expect. We do. Yeah. Especially with stuff like that. And so that's why there is, um, if you do any research at all into storytelling, um, if you deviate from storytelling conventions, your story probably won't work. Because, um, you know, romances, they have very specific things that need to happen. And when you deviate from that, it, the story does not work, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's really interesting because you think, oh, you know, I want to try something. It's, it's kind of why, I don't know, it's like Ulysses by James Joyce breaks all of the story conventions. And yes, his, it's, it's considered to be one of, the, one of the literary masterpieces of the 20th century, but it's incredibly difficult to read. It's and not fun. It's, I don't know. I mean, there are people who will say they love it. I don't love it. I've tried to read it. I don't love it. I'm not going to slag it off because it's James Joyce and, you know, not going to do that. But he broke all of the rules and it's not a book that's easy to read and it's not a book that a lot of people mm. have read. And there, there is a reason for that. So uh, just keep that in mind. But yes, that is. I hope that you're going to listen to this and think, jeepers, I could just outline my book and get going. And if you've listened to this and it's just too much information, too fast... You need to look in the show notes, get the link, go and download it. Yeah. And even better, go and buy my book. Or buy the book. Yeah. I actually do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> pretty good at this. Yeah. Um, sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes I think, I'm having a day where I think I'm pretty good at this. Nice. Other days I'm like, oh my God, everything's rubbish. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, you can buy my book from moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash buy the book or from Amazon. It'll be available on Amazon, I think, by the time this comes out. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. No worries.